Hey Morningstar, thanks so much for inviting me in to your small group as we complete this Monopoly series. For the past few weeks, we've been uh, getting together, talking about how our lives can so easily get overrun, monopolized uh, by the pursuit of newer, bigger, faster, more, more money, more stuff, more experiences. And, and honestly, while probably none of those things we want are inherently wrong or, or evil, they represent a slippery slope uh, uh, that in our pursuit of these things, we can, we can eventually begin to fall in love with them. We can begin to order our lives around them. We can sacrifice the time that we should be spending with God and the ministry to which he's called us and, and really make them the focus of our, our life. This, this week in, in worship, I talked about two different sets of tactics. Uh, tactics used to play the game of Monopoly and then tactics for living as a citizen of God's kingdom. The four tactics for monopoly, and honestly, how so many in our culture play the game of life, are these. First of all, it's about amassing money. Uh, you know, being able to, to really keep get the money we were given at the beginning of the game, pass go, collect our $200, try to land on free parking, or, or win the community chest lottery. It's about strategically saving as much money as we can. And then, second of all, acquiring property. Buying that property strategically according to your game plan. You need to know what your game plan is. It is, a, is it a utilities and, and railroads game plan? Is it a Donald Trump game plan to get park place and, and boardwalk? Or maybe you're the slumdog millionaire and, and you're Vintner and, and St. Charles Place and, and Mediterranean Avenue. And after you've kind of amassed your, your money and you've kind of you know, began acquiring property, the third step is to build monopolies, to buy, sell, trade property in order to get everything in a color group so you can start building those houses and then hotels with the goal of number four, bankrupting your competitors. Get them so broke that they have to mortgage their properties. They have to turn that property over, get a little bit, you know, half the money back so that they can pay you rent. You land on their property. You don't have to pay them rent, but then they land on your property, just kind of, you know, furnished with a, with a hotel there at Marvin Gardens. You're going to just bankrupt them. Boom. Game over. Now listen, well, most of us don't have a personal goal to bankrupt our neighbor. The truth is we... We often compete with them, don't we? We compare our lives to their lives in so many ways. What they do, what they have, what we have, what we do. And, and as we talked about last week, hey, the enemy uses comparison to crush the gift of contentment that comes from trusting in the abundance of God. So to help combat that from happening, God gives us in the New Testament a set of new tactics passed along by the Apostle Paul to a younger pastor named Timothy. Now, Timothy was living in the city of Ephesus, and Ephesus was honestly one of the top four cosmopolitan commercial cities in the entire world. Its inhabitants were incredibly consumer-minded to the point where they were being monopolized by their quest for more stuff that, that kept coming in through the seaports and the, the trade routes. They would just buy stuff from all over the world and it was about more, more, more. And Paul says to Timothy, hey, their soul is at stake here. They're worshiping a different God. So here's what he says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 18 to 20. He says, command those who are rich in this present world, and hey, that's us. We're the rich ones that don't think, because your tendency is to always think someone else is rich because compared to you, they have a little bit more, but we need to compare ourselves to the other 95% of the world, that we're in the top 5% of the rich people. So Paul's talking to us when he says, hey, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant or to put their hope in wealth because that's so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, who richly provides everything for our enjoyment. See, God provides things for our enjoyment. Paul says to Timothy, command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, to be generous and willing to share, and in this way they will lay up a treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, and in doing that they may take hold of the life that truly is life. Friends, that passage gives us four very different tactics. Four tactics that we can employ if we want to truly enjoy a satisfied life, a life that's successful in the eyes of God, and a life of significance 
to know that our, our lives have meaning and purpose. Paul says to Timothy, tell people, here are the tactics. First of all, be rich in good deeds. Instead of being so consumed about amassing money, be rich in good deeds. Hey, instead of trying to acquire all the property you can, Paul says, number two, be generous, be willing to share. Hey, instead of building monopolies, build a firm foundation for future gain. Don't put all your eggs in this basket, but make sure that you're being generous to people, but you're also being generous with God. And then fourth, he says, take hold of Jesus' abundant life. Instead of putting other people out of, you know, as competitors, bankrupting them, take hold of the abundance that God has for you. Now, as a small group, I challenge you guys tonight to talk about all four of these tactics, what they look like to you, the challenges they represent. I'd especially invite you to spend a little more time on number four and talk about what abundant life really means. What does abundant life mean to most people in our culture? What does abundant life mean to you? And uh, what do you think Jesus meant when he said abundant life? So have a great conversation. Remember that monopoly, monopoline, one, sell. He's inviting us to sell out to him, to the one who gave us life, and then the one who came to die on a cross to give us life abundant and eternal. Trust in that abundance. Make Jesus your savior. Make him your Lord. Live by these four new tactics. And as we do, the kingdom. Hey, the kingdom is gonna come not only into your heart, but on earth a little more like it is in heaven. That's God's call, his commission to us as we disciples go and make disciples for Jesus Christ. Have a great conversation and thanks again for being a part of this monopolized small group series. God bless you guys.